Tax Made Easy, Selected Tips, 84 Pages, Brought to You by Wings of Success, Individual Tax Saving Ideas, Saving Money is Always a Good Thing, But When It Comes to Your Taxes, It Can Seem Like You're Stuck Paying the Amount You Are Told to, Pay. However, this is simply not the case, while the tax code is rigid and there are a lot of rules to follow, the truth is that many people, don't take the time to learn how the rules work and how they can work to their advantage, often, there are rules that can help to lower your annual gross income so that you're not only lessening your taxes, but also getting a larger return for that vacation you've always wanted to take. First of all, what you need to realize is that there are two different kinds of deductions that are listed in tax law, deductions and tax credits. Deductions are those costs that are subtracted from your gross income on the front side of a tax form before anything else is taken off. These help to lower your tax bracket first along with the standardized deductions that everyone has on their forms. Tax credits are those deductions that come directly off of the amount you are to be taxed. Obviously, these are much more significant and will help to dramatically lower your owed taxes. When you look at a basic 1040 form, which the usual form that most individuals use, you will notice that on the front of the form, you can take deductions for the following exemptions, that is, those people who are dependent on you. You get a tax break for them. This is, generally going to be one or two if you don't have any children, single or married correspond. With one and two, dot, you might also reduce the taxes you owe at the end of the year by reducing the exemptions you claim on your initial W-2 form, instead of claiming one, you might want to claim zero. This maximizes the amount of taxes that are taken from your paycheck. There are also standard deductions that everyone can take. Some of these include, for the 2007 tax year, single deduction, $5,350, married, filing separately deduction, $5,350, married, filing jointly, $10,700, head of household, $7,850, widow, or $10,700. Each year these deductions seem to go up and help ease the burden of taxes on everyone in some way, these deductions will go on Schedule A to help reduce your gross income, medical deductions, if you have a lot of medical expenses. You will want to keep receipts and make sure to enter in the totals here. What can and cannot be included in this total varies per year, so you will want to check with the IRS to see what the current rules are. These costs cannot be something that was reimbursed by your health insurance company or by another else, taxes that you already paid, if you already paid estimated taxes, you will want to make sure that you are listing that total, this can be money that you sent the IRS to help with this section or it can be associated with a business, home mortgage interest and points, if you own a home, you can reduce your income by adding in the interest that you paid on your mortgage. This is taken off along with any points associated with your mortgage value. Charitable contributions, the trick with charity is that you really do have to give a lot in order to make a difference on your taxes. You also need to be sure that you are giving to registered charities in order to have it count with the IRS. Make sure that you get the receipts from all of your donations in place. The total here, casualty and theft losses, if you were a victim of theft, you might be able to recuperate some of the losses here. This can be a difficult deduction to justify, so be sure you have the help of a professional tax preparer before you fill in this section yourself. Job expenses, outside of a small business, if you work for someone else and you can deduct costs for supplies associated with your job here. This can also include education costs associated with getting more training for your job or for a future job in which you could make more money. While tax credits can't help you to increase your refund, they can eliminate the tax you owe. Various tax credits that you can take off of individual taxes include Earned Income Tax Credit. This is a credit that you can qualify for if you have dependents and your income level falls below a certain level. Child Care Tax Credit, like the Earned Income Credit, this is taken if your income falls below a certain level. Hope Tax Credit slash Lifelong Learning Credit, this is a tax credit that helps people who are returning to school pay for their costs. Elderly tax credit, if you are 65 or older, you can qualify for this credit. You can also help reduce your overall taxes by getting the alternative energy tax credit for installing certain environmentally friendly energy. 
Producers When you install solar panels and begin to create your own source of energy, it's the law that anything additional you make can be sold to the local energy companies for a profit, talk with a CPA or a tax professional about how this can work in your favor. Not only are you cutting down on your energy costs, but the tax breaks come from the initial investments you make in the very expensive equipment, buying a hybrid car, while these deductions are slowly being phased out, you might want to still check to see if you can qualify with your hybrid car purchase or upgrades. Paying interest on your student loans, if you began to pay off your student interest before you were out of school, you were doing yourself a tax favor. In addition, if you are making payments that not only attack the principal, but also the interest, the interest payments are all deductible. The government will send you a ticket at the end of the year of the total amount, investing in your company's 401k plan as this cost comes off of your income, before taxes, while this isn't actually a deduction. When you put money toward a savings plan before taxes, you are reducing the amount of money to be taxed and thus reducing your taxes, owed, buying into your company's health insurance plan as this cost comes off of your income before taxes, this is the same deal as when you pay into your company's 401k plan, talk with your tax preparer to see what else you might qualify for in order to reduce your taxes. Tax saving measures for business, whether you're running your own business or simply in charge of the finances at someone else's company, you can do many things to reduce the tax load, in fact, it's often easier to get tax breaks as a business because you are contributing to the economy's stability and encouraging employees to pay taxes as well. Business expenses, if you are self-employed, you will be directed to another form, Schedule C, to fill out and provide your total expenses on that form. This will help to reduce your overall income as it will be taken away from the gross income total. Some legitimate business expenses include Office supplies, computer equipment, internet access, phones, cell phones, phone bills, research tools, software, upgrades, automobiles that are only used for work purposes, repairs on your equipment, training and development, subscriptions, fees, but there are also a lot of business expenses that you can also deduct, though you might need to list them on different areas on your Schedule C form. Medical costs, if you are self-employed or running a small business and paying for your own health insurance, premiums, these are considered to be tax deductible. In an effort to help small businesses stay in business, the IRS allows for this deduction, self-employment savings plans, as a small business or a self-employed person, you don't necessarily have the chance to contribute to a 401k in order to get a matching contribution from your employer. In order to make up for that, the IRS allows self-employed people to contribute to self-employed retirement. Plans without paying any taxes and giving businesses the ability to deduct that from the gross income. This encourages saving, plus it allows self-employed workers the chance to save for retirement, office space, even if you work out of your home, you can still deduct costs associated with your office space. The only concern is that the space is used only for business-related tasks. That is, you can't work from an office that also doubles as a bedroom and count that portion of your home as office costs, utilities, again, if you use certain amounts of utilities only for your business, these can also be deducted from your taxes. This includes water, lights, and gas, hire independent contractors, instead of hiring employees to work for you, be sure to hire independent contractors. This way, you don't have to give them any tax information at the end of the year, plus you don't have to withhold taxes for them. Be sure that they know their status, however, when they file their own. Taxes, hire family members, when you hire a spouse or a family member, you don't have to withhold any federal taxes for them and you also don't have to pay for any unemployment taxes, travel. If you are traveling for business, you can not only deduct the costs of the airplane tickets and the hotel, but if you drive, you can also deduct the mileage to and from your place of work. Entertainment, if you needed to go to a conference that was clearly related to your work, then this is also deductible. Advertising, you can deduct the costs of business cards, flyers, etc. from your taxes, professional and legal fees, should you need any professional services for your business, these costs can also be deducted, 
from your taxes, depreciation costs, if you have a computer for five years, you can deduct a certain percentage of the original cost each year after you buy it. The only trick with business deductions is that you don't want to deduct too much as it might look to the IRS as though you are simply trying to give excuses for buying these pieces of equipment and that your business may not really need it. In fact, business deductions are a main source of many tax audits. If you're not sure whether or not you can deduct something, it's generally best to not only ask a tax preparer before you do, but also be sure that you can document that it was for business purposes. The tax audit, the fact is that most small businesses are going to be audited at one point or another. It's simply a fact of life for those that are running their own business and computing their own income without the benefit of a payroll department and an accountant. But while it will probably happen at one point or another of your business career, that doesn't mean it needs to be a difficult ordeal. Here are the facts about an audit, you're not going to jail. It's just a chance for you to show an auditor how you came up. With the numbers on your tax forms, when you have all of your receipts to prove your expenses, it will be no problem to show the auditor where the miscommunication might be, you can always bring a lawyer in with you if you are concerned about your rights, you will have time to prepare, if you can't prove something during an audit, you might have to pay a penalty fee for the issue at hand, always dress up and be professional at an audit. In many cases, you might simply receive a note in the mail about a piece of information that is needed for your taxes. Just send in a copy or the original of this item and more, often than not, that's all you will need to do, try to find out exactly what they are concerned about before you go into an audit so that you can be ready with supporting information. While an audit might be a terrifying experience for you, there's really nothing to be afraid of unless you blatantly lied to the IRS about a lot of money. The worst case scenarios are that you will have to go to prison for IRS fraud, but if it's just a little error, you'll probably just need to pay a fine. The ins and outs of federal payroll taxes, say you own a sizable company with several employees. You would essentially need to pay a tax called as the federal payroll tax. Federal payroll tax is what the company pays against the employees it hires. To be precise, the internal revenue services are quite picky about how they receive this. Money. A little miscalculation can lead a rich fine. Depending upon the margin of error, sending a wrong amount of tax can charge you fees into thousands or even millions. Hence it is indispensable for the company to understand the details of this tax. In order to get the federal payroll tax right, you must keep in mind certain facts and ideas. Here are some glimpses. 1. The W-4 form. Whenever the company hires a new employee make sure that he or she fills in the W-4 form. The W-4 form asks for some information that you must reassure that the employee is filling in. With utmost honesty. Actually this information would decide the amount of money that you would need to withhold from their paycheck for taxes. For instance, a question talks about their marital status. Further it mentions about the number of dependents for them. In terms of economics, dependents are those family members who are dependent on the individual for their living expenses care like children and sometimes parents, too. Employers share, the employer is equally responsible to pay the federal payroll taxes. So this tax money comes from another resource as well. Besides holding back some portion of the employee's paycheck, he has to add some amount from his end, for instance, you would partially need to pay the FICA taxes. FICA taxes form the social, securities and they also include the Medicare taxes. Hence, you have to split the federal payroll, taxes along with the employee. 3. Create savings, even delayed payments call for fine. So, plan well your share in the federal payroll taxes and create savings for the same. This way you would have ready funds to pay the tax in time. 4. Hire a learned accountant. While as the owner of the company, you might be able to learn all the tips and tricks well, enough, it is always worth to have a trained personnel. Make sure to hire a trained accountant, equipped with all the required knowledge about federal payroll taxes. After all, at the end of the day, it is a professional's job, what next, collect the federal payroll taxes from your employees, Add in your share in time and be rest assured with the right guidance from the professionals.
why people file taxes online. Great many numbers of people are becoming internet buffs nowadays. They like to make everything simpler. Their world operates on a simple rule, one little click and the job is done, the same rule is now highly applied to the taxes. The numbers of tax payees online is indeed growing, yet there are people who feel rather comfortable in filling in the regular booklets. There are two main reasons for this. One, they are skeptical and unsure of the process. They often get scared to fill in the so personal and critical details online, too. Some initially try this just because the others are doing so. That means that collect no information of the process or the way of doing it correctly and just pound in and finally land up discarding the technique. However, those who have been doing it as a practice and those who are joining the gang still consider this quite a boon. They say it is a wonderful facility that has really made their job easier. They are not only sure that it is a secure quicker means of paying taxes, but also perceive it to be more accurate. Well, the idea is to know the right sites. A lot of people go through the unregistered and wrong websites before logging on the right option just to know the difference and hence gain more perfection. However, following below are the inevitable benefits of filing taxes online. 1. It is faster. Filing taxes online is a very quick and crisp process rather than the traditional long one. Provided you have all the papers in order and have some knowledge about the process it is way too easy. 2. It makes the refunds faster. In case you are eligible for any refunds, paying taxes online would pace up the process of getting back the amount. Of course, there are very few taxpayers who receive a refund every year. Rather many of us end up paying the money back to the government, free. It is free of charge, many web portals nowadays assure the service of filing income tax online as free. Yet, a majority of them charge some service fee. That implies that it is not a free service, while the decision is still individual, whether they would pay the taxes online or the traditional booklet manner, the online eye is worth a try. For those who want to experience the process, try logging on the government and IRS websites. Also TurboTax websites are a great option. What are your county property taxes used for? County property taxes are often the highest among the taxes and that we surely dislike paying. This bill gives you good shock at times. This is because these taxes are indeed soaring high these days. However, they greatly vary as per the area you reside in and the state you live in. I'm sure you wonder as to what is the need of this tax. Why do we pay it? Where is this money utilized? Well, you would be glad to realize that a major portion of these taxes are stay right within our local communities especially for our benefit. This money is diversified in fields like education, police firefighting facilities, etc., while some local city county property taxes are given to the state, in almost all areas at least, 90% property taxes paid by us remain local benefiting our community at large. Even in the state, revenues, they just form a meager portion, given below are the most common uses of the county property taxes. 1. Schools, in a majority of areas across the nation. More than half of each dollar paid as the county, property tax is used to fund the local school district. In fact, this is the most important source of income for the local school districts in a number of states. These schools use the tax money to purchase books, to pay the salary of the staff the teachers, for the maintenance of the school, buildings buses, etc. Too. Roads, the money paid as county property tax is extensively used for the maintenance of roads. All sorts of minor repairs and other requisites like widening of the roads are taken care of in order to maintain the good working order. 3. Police and fire support, the city county property taxes are also used as funds to pay the salaries of our sheriff. Also, in most cases, our local police officers and firefighters use this money to support the necessary infrastructure required for these services like the buildings and vehicles. 4. Public libraries, it is a less known fact that libraries most oft are maintained by the county. Hence, the county, 
property taxes are used primary funds for the building maintenance staff salaries. Then of course, it is this money paid by the taxpayers that is used to purchase new books for the library. 5. Hospitals, at times government-operated hospitals have to be closed due to losses. But it is always in the interest of the community to have a hospital close by in the vicinity itself. So the taxpayers have to bear a certain amount for this facility. Some part of the county property tax that we pay goes to the hospitals that run into losses in order to keep them afloat. 6. County government, and, among the essential uses, county property tax funds the local county government. They use this money for the upkeep of the office space and to pay administrative salaries. Now, the next time you use the community services, remember that it's your money being used, it's your civic duty to watch how each dollar is being spent. Check the unnecessary spending, and always remember that county property tax is the only tax that benefits you most, individually, offering personal financial advice, Ameriprise Financial, services, in today's growing consumer market, where one has plethora of options to choose from for, almost all goods and services, many companies have managed to maintain their goodwill and, win the rat race with a simple rule, consumer in the king, some companies have carved their niche with prompt and, accurate customer services and, support system. A leading name among financial advisory services today is, Ameriprise, Financial Services, or the AFS, Ameriprise Financial Services initiated as a small company from a local office, and have, managed to expand a fortune. They are best known for their online financial advisory services, and personal consultation. Their strategy for the same is to use a handy advisor locator. The best part of using this locator, is that you do not need to give any personal details. On the company's web portal simply key in, your zip code. The locator would automatically supply a list of Ameriprise financial services, advisors within your vicinity. Be rest assured that you won't be contacted unless until you, yourself opt to call an agent. Besides the regular functions of the web portals, Ameriprise financial services website offers. Enormous wealth of information on all aspects regarding financial planning. An individual's financial planning primarily depends on their budget and the financial requirements. However, at the end financial planning remains one's personal decision. Yet, all of us need to have a clear understanding of our goals from the same. The personal advisors at Ameriprise Financial Services understand these basics and hence, their website details the very core information like, I, the fundamentals of investment. 2. Tips for paperwork. 3. Information that we must put forward before the advisor to make the best of his services. This way he or she would give you the best possible recommendations for your personalized financial planning needs, how the Ameriprise Financial Services Advisor works. Ameriprise Financial Services Personal Financial Planner initially offers a free consultation session. Here, he or she would help you identify your financial goals. He or she would present before you the realistic concrete picture of your current scenario and your actual needs. That is your financial stand today and what it requires to meet what you want. In the following sessions, the advisors would help you synchronize the goals, that is, prioritizing, the needs wants. He or she would then prepare the information you need. Next, he or she would present this information in a way that it clarifies all your doubts. Hence the advisor would help you understand the best possible ways to achieve your financial goals. Ameriprise Financial Services Advisors are always there for you in order to answer your questions. Yet, they are just advisors and they would leave the final decisions for the client or customer. Finally a written plan would be developed. As per your requisites and goals it would also be modified until completion, that is not all. You advisor would also help you implement the plan with regular meetings, ensuring that the customer stays on the track to achieve their financial objectives and goals, they would guide you through the required changes as well, what are the other services provided by Ameriprise Financial Services, 1. Insurance, Ameriprise Financial Services also deals with insurance. They provide, i, life insurance, 2. Health insurance, 3. 
Disability Insurance, 4. Long-Term Care Insurance, v. Home Insurance, 6. Auto Insurance, 2. Banking Lending Agency, Ameriprise Financial Services is also an efficient banking lending agency so they help you, through money management financial planning in the practical terms. 3. Investment Products, Ameriprise Financial Services Investment Products include the following, I, IRAs, 2. Annuities, 3. Stocks, 4. Bonds. V. Mutual funds, this implies that the clients could easily diversify the portfolios try varied types of investments during working with the advisors. Using free tax preparation software, filing taxes almost gives goose bumps to all of us. Remember, your sunny walk up to that library to fetch the relevant forms. Then, sticking on to your forms, notepads, and calculator for hours and days together. You indeed have had sleepless nights and numbers flashing up with closed eyes. And finally, mailing the whole thing well within the time limit that is before the due date, well, surely with the last two decades there are very emergent changes coming in. Earlier, those who did not take the toil of calculating the tax himself, landed up paying good bulk of money to the professional companies for the same. This implies, either you shred off your pocket or tighten up that belt for some real hard work, thanks to the emergence of personal computers and the spread of the world wide web that is, the internet. We now have many resorts on hand. Some better and easy means to face the giant that is, calculation and filing of the tax returns. Convenience has indeed taken over toil. So keep aside your calculator, pen and load of sheets, and switch over the click method, save the fortune you are paying to those professionals and switch over to the software to simplify the project, yes, these days the market is flooded with the software that can calculate your taxes with just a few clicks. The trend is so much on that with some research on the internet you can get this software absolutely free of cost, as a result, there is little reason or no reason at all to go for the traditional tax preparers. Anymore. Filling out the paper forms is also becoming obsolete with time, several companies in order to have effective promotion campaigns annually around the tax payment schedules now usually offer free downloads of the standard version of their software for tax preparation. One would only need to pay for the exclusive, super hyped or special editions. Well, the good news is that these are not so required. Just enjoy the free tax preparation software and save the annual toil of solving long complex calculations. Yes, these software do your calculations within seconds. To use the software well enough, you would have to enter the figures from the W-2 forms. Doesn't that sound good enough? One thing you must keep on mind. While tax preparation can come free of cost, paying the taxes online does not come for free. One needs to pay the essential service tax for it. Yet, filing your federal and state tax returns electronically would cost you rather cheap than hiring the individuals for doing this, consulting tax attorneys, tax law specialists, when it comes to paying taxes, majority of the folks are in doubt of how to pay them, where to pay them, how to handle taxes, etc. There are tax attorneys, better known as tax law specialists, who can guide you through the process. Let me list out the advantages of using such specialists. A. Tax attorneys are familiar with the tax code. However, if you have to find the tax code on your own, you definitely have to spend at least a couple of hours searching for it. Every one of us know the fact that the laws pertaining to tax are complicated. These tax law attorneys have the requisite training that is required to update us with the tax laws and how to use them. B. You can save a small amount of money when you use tax law attorneys. How? As they are aware of the tax codes, they know the deductions you are eligible for. You too might know, however, not to the extent these attorneys know. As how nothing is permanent in the world, tax laws also change. Tax law attorneys are given adequate training about these changes in the tax laws. Therefore, they will be able to prepare your taxes in a lucrative manner. You definitely can save a lot of money if you get in touch with a tax law attorney to prepare your taxes. D. 
Do you know that the fees paid to your tax law attorney can be deducted from your tax? Yes, hiring a tax law attorney is indeed a good option. C. Are you one among many who fear audits? If yes, make use of tax law specialists as they do not make mistakes. Similarly, most of the times, IRS will not audit a tax return prepared by a tax law attorney. However, if an audit comes, tax law attorney will guide you through the process and will provide the essential details asked by the IRS team. D. You not only save money but also time if you get in touch with a tax attorney to prepare your tax returns. This is definitely a lucrative option if you are a busy person. Attorney himself will take care of the essentials that are required to prepare the tax returns. Above all, you can relax in peace, with the above advantages, I'm sure from now on, you will consult a tax attorney for preparing, the taxes instead of you spending hours in preparing them all by yourself, delinquent property taxes, three steps to deal with your delinquent property taxes, do you have some delinquent property taxes on your part? Are you in a state of panic? Now. You do not need to worry about the problems you are facing. Property taxes are usually complex issues and most of the people get confused over this. All you need to do is to keep some steps in your mind while resolving your issues regarding your delinquent property taxes. Some of these steps are as follows. 1. First of all, you should approach your tax collector. You would lead nowhere by avoiding or hiding their calls. Tax collector can be a great source of information and can help you with payment plan to assist you in cases where people do not answer to his correspondence are considered as non-payers of delinquent property tax by tax collectors and they initiate other methods for tax collection. Whenever you discuss your delinquent property taxes with your tax collector, be sure to ask the interest and penalties you have accrued in your account. If the interest rate charged by the tax collector is greater than the interest on loan, then it would be better to opt for the loan to pay your taxes. Two, secondly, you can talk with mortgage company. You can pay your taxes along with your mortgage payments on a monthly basis if you have mortgage on home. This way you can ease your tension for years to come by considering your tax as a part of mortgage. Mortgage companies collect this monthly tax amount and put it aside in an escrow account. They pay your taxes at the end of the year from this account. This way you would not only be relieved of the taxes of current year but would also be prepared in advance for the coming year delinquent property taxes. 3. Pay them something or a small amount of money to show that you are willing to pay back your taxes even if in small amounts. For example, if you make a small payment of $1.20 every paycheck you receive then your tax collector would have an impression that you are paying your pending bills. In most of such cases, tax collectors do not put lien on the property. If you do not pay your taxes at all or do not make any arrangements for the same, then your taxes may be sold at delinquent tax lien sale. Many people have a myth that their property is sold in this type of sale which is not true as only your delinquent taxes are sold to the highest bidder and not your property. However, if you do not pay the taxes to holder of delinquent tax lien then he or she can foreclose the lien and acquire your property. So, it could be an alarming situation for you if your lien is sold in the sale, therefore, it is a nightmare for many and most of the people are scared of this situation, you can solve all such situations if you learn to deal with your tax collector and make affordable payments on time. Although you may have to work with your tax collector for some time and understand the requirements completely. Take proper steps to get rid of this problem and prepare in advance in future to avoid such problems. Federal income taxes, how to deal with federal income taxes, most of the people get stressed out whenever they have to file details of their federal income taxes. In fact, there are people who are more scared than stressed, the key point every individual who has to file his or her federal income taxes should consider is to understand the way they would be dealing with their taxes. There are several ways to do this, and you can choose the option that suits you the best. First of all, decide who will do this. You would do this yourself or you need a professional help on this. If you are planning to do it yourself then do it correctly and recheck so that you do not leave anything unfilled. However, nowadays various types of computer programs are available 
that has made it easy for an individual to file his or her federal income taxes, you can purchase such computer programs or download it from the internet or from government. Websites to file your federal income taxes. If you are looking for a professional to file your federal income taxes then all you need to do is to keep all your paperwork present. It would be convenient if you could arrange your paperwork a little in advance, however, hiring a professional for this job is an expensive idea. Most of the professional tax companies often charge base rate plus perform rate they fill for you. This makes it a costly affair for any individual. The best part of taking services of these professionals is that in case you are audited then they would be present there while auditing is going on to assist you in every possible manner, you should have proper knowledge about the due date for filing your federal income tax. In most of the cases, people are unaware of the due date to file their details which adds to the problem. April 15th is the due date for filing federal income tax. If it is a weekend on this date, then the due date is postponed to next business day. Sometimes, the due date is extended to October 15th on some special occasions, most of the time, you would not get any refund at the end when you file your federal income taxes. You may need to pay more to the government to meet the taxes levied on you. This usually happens with people who do not pay their taxes properly to the government during past year. If a self-employed person earns an income but does not pay his taxes periodically through the year to the government then he or she may end up paying his or her taxes at the end of the year. The income of the individual decides the amount of the tax that would be levied upon him or her. The best part of IRS is that in cases where an individual needs to pay a large sum of money as his or her tax is given the privilege to opt for an optimum payment plan. He or she may plan to pay their taxes monthly, bi-weekly or weekly. This is set as per the capability of the payer and the amount he or she can afford. However, the government may levy your wages if you do not pay your taxes in the specified time. Once you file federal income taxes just pray to God that you are not told to pay back more to the government. You should not face any type of problems during the tax season if you have paid appropriate taxes throughout the year. File State Taxes e-file system is the best way to file your state taxes, are you confused upon filing your state taxes? Do you need help on this? Follow some of the basic steps to understand the way to file your state tax. Nowadays, you can file your state tax using e-file system where all types of state or federal taxes can be filed online or electronically. This is a combined effort by state and IRS tax administration agencies to serve masses. You may take services of a professional to file your taxes online or do it yourself directly from the comfort of your home. Following states can effectively participate in e-file system of filing state or federal taxes, Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Connecticut, Colorado, District of Columbia, Delaware, Hawaii, Georgia, Illinois, Idaho, Iowa, Indiana, Wisconsin, Kentucky, Kansas, Maryland, Louisiana, Mississippi, Michigan, Montana, Missouri, New Jersey, Nebraska, New York, New Mexico, North Dakota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Oregon, South Carolina, Rhode Island, Vermont, Utah, West Virginia. Virginia, the facility of e-file is also provided to taxpayers having a gross income of less than or equal to $52,000. The best part of e-file is that you can file your state as well as federal taxes returns on this electronic filing at once. E-file uses a software program that places the data to be transmitted in two separate packets for state returns and federal returns but uses a single envelope while transmitting it to IRS. IRS receives this envelope and forwards the rest to the concerned. Department for Processing and Electronic Return Benefits of using electronic filing system for state taxes are faster processing, proof of filing can be retained easily, faster receipt of refund, convenience, more accurate, there are exactly two options for people who want to file their state taxes directly. Either you can hire some tax professional who can assist you in completing tax return forms or you may take help of a software or manually fill up your forms. Only problem with filing your details in these forms by yourself is that you may not have 
adequate knowledge of the credits and possible deductions as per your state law using which you can get benefited. Different states have distinct laws or tax rates. Only a tax professional can tell you about these tax rates and legal issues. You may take services of these tax professionals who can help you find those specific deductions or credits. They have knowledge about the specific laws that govern your state. You can maximize your tax returns by paying a small fee of around $100 to $150 to these professionals. Filing income taxes, how to file income taxes, most of the people are unsure of the way of filing income tax. In some cases, such type of people often tend to hire people who are professionals to file their income taxes, it is a new thing to file an income tax for many. Such novice taxpayers are completely unaware of the norms and ways to file income taxes. Most of them are only aware of the fact that people receive refunds from the income tax department at end. Such people are not even aware of the importance or use of filing income tax and do not know that it is all about, it is not so that they are not aware of the purpose behind filing income taxes. Most of them are not even aware of what they would need for filing their income taxes. Luckily, such unaware, people have experienced people around them who usually guide them what all would be required to file an income tax. This is only the case if your fellows file income tax properly, otherwise you would have to hire services of professional tax company. Companies guide people about the documents that would be required to file income tax, only thing you would require is W-2s from your employer if you are going to a professional for assistance on filing income tax. You may have to take other types of forms from your employer, if you are an individual who is self-employed or have income from other sources, more the forms to be filed for income tax, larger would be the charges of the company. This will cost you a bit expensive if there are more forms to be filed. In most of the cases professional, income tax companies charge a base rate for normal filing procedure and charge an extra share for every added form they fill out. However, the company would assist you if you are audited by the government in future. This way these income tax companies would provide you the service you expect. It is very stressful and full of hassles to file income taxes on your own. This is not a statement by an individual but many people have this thinking. However, there are various options available to people these days to overcome and avoid such problems. You can hire services of a professional if you do not want to take any type of responsibility. Secondly, you can keep your records updated and in order. Keep every receipt you get on a proper place and arrange them at the end of the month. Everything you do or prepare for before tax season would help you at the end while filing income tax. If all your records are in order then all you would require to do is to add few totals. You can initiate many options if you are a novice and is unaware of most of the complexities of filing income tax. You can take help of your local government or go to IRS if you do not have anyone to assist you and you do not want to go to any tax company. Financial planning software 9 benefits of financial. Planning software Financial planning software helps to track the status of the financial conditions of any business and is known as a great business intelligence tool. Benefits of such financial planning software are many. It can be used by any business organization due to its vast variety of functions such as tracking, reconciling, balancing, analysis, reporting etc. If you are looking for something that could assist you in business intelligence standardization, then financial planning software would be an excellent choice for you. It is a very useful and effective business intelligence tool. It can also contribute to an individual's personal financial planning also. Some of the benefits of financial planning software are as follows. 1. Easy reconciliation. With the help of financial planning software your task of reconciling personal financial accounts is easier and quicker. You can review your statements and check your transactions with the help of this software. 2. Accurate account balance. This would save a lot of time on the part of the user he or she had to spend preparing tax reports or adjustments. For detailed budgeting, you can set up your budgets easily with the help of financial planning software as majority of design programs have wizards that would assist you with setting up or creating budgets. 
what is more. These financial planning software also generates budget, tracking reports that creates categories of budget as expenses and income. Such software helps you to track a budget in a tedious way. 5. Pay bills online. You can pay all your bills online with financial planning software. You can enter your transaction automatically from any of the account in your software. 6. Simple downloads. You can download or import all of the data entries from any type of electronic source into your financial software accounts. It makes the use of data entries very convenient for its users. 7. Analyze and track investments. Financial planning software have this feature using which you can update your account values and investment transactions online. However, online, updates of type of information, mutual funds, current rate of securities etc. are taken from the internet itself. You can track your investment accounts by use of reports or graphs provided in the financial planning software. 8. Schedule transactions. Financial planning software have this feature using which you can do direct payments or deposits with the help of automatic transactions. However, you need to set up your financial planning software registers for updating. 9. Determine net worth. The net worth of an organization is depicted by use of graph or a report in most of the financial planning software. To get the accurate results during the net worth of your business, you need to keep a track of your liabilities and current assets, free taxes, benefits of filing free taxes online, you would find a lot of on-site or online services to file income tax returns annually when there is time to file income tax. This makes the process of filing income tax easier. Free taxes filing is one of the best services one could ever offer. Most of the people tend to rely upon a professional tax preparer as they want to be as accurate as possible while filing their income tax. An average layperson may miss various points such as tax credits or deductions which are very important and are considered by a tax preparer. However, it may cost a bit expensive to hire such services but is very beneficial for people with complex tax returns. Some of the services which offers free taxes filing are used widely by many people. However, there are some restrictions but you can opt from numerous services offered for free tax filing in cooperation with IRS. People who have an adjusted gross income of $50,000 or less can use a service for free filing of income tax by use of IRS website. In some cases, you may be charged a fee for filing state taxes. If you are considering some company to who are offering such services with IRS often state their own requirements. Therefore, you should read all disclosures before using such programs. You must access IRS website to file your taxes for free. Free online tax filing programs are not much different from other tax filing programs. However, you may find some features that makes those popular and expensive tax filing programs may not be present in these free online tax filing programs of IRS. If your tax returns have very little, itemize deductions and are simple enough then you should consider using these free online tax filing programs by IRS. These websites sometimes offer you some CDs or IRA but you are not forced to purchase them. Moreover, you can also find these programs in Spanish language. In other words, these free online tax filing programs requires users to be self-guided and fill the forms by providing detailed information about their filing and income status. All you need to do is to provide answers to the series of questions asked in these programs. The conclusion of this program would list you all the details of your filled form and you can review it before filing. These are signed and sent electronically over the network. These online returns are not prone to errors, unlike other methods. Moreover, the correspondence is quick and reliable. You would receive quick confirmation about your return and its status of received and accepted would be displayed. Income tax forms 3 must to follow if you desire to fill your income tax forms yourself. Many people never think about the tax time until they are forced to. Everyone dreads in the tax season. You cannot get around from the fact that at the end of every year you have to file income tax forms on or before April 15th to avoid any complications. Most of the people struggle year after year to accomplish this task.
The main reason behind this, is that they do not know the way to do it. In other cases people consume so much concentration, and time which frustrates them, irrespective of your reason for not willing to file income tax forms. You are supposed to do it, annually. You would be considered at fault as not doing it is against the law. Who would like to, get into trouble with government and that too for not filing his or her income tax forms in time, you would need to search for forms whenever you require to complete and send your income, tax forms. You may do this by directly contacting the Department of Revenue and IRS office or online to get forms for filing the income tax, you would need to complete the forms correctly once you have appropriate set of forms, you can file your tax yourself. If you do not want to mess up your work then you may hire a professional for you to assist you on this. If you are planning to do it yourself that you should, consider some things before doing it. Some of these points are as follows, you should calculate your taxes for filing as an individual. Moreover, you should ascertain what is your AGI or adjusted gross income. For this, you may refer to guides that can help you with the procedure to do this. Although it may be a bit confusing whenever you do first starting form but, you would be able to do it easily once you concentrate, you would need to calculate taxes of your business if you own one. Most of the businesses employ an accountant who is capable of doing this but it would be a good idea to keep a track by the owner of that business so that he or she can be aware of the way to do this. You should have knowledge about the tax bracket you lie in. In total, there are six tax brackets, depending upon your status, such as 10%, 15%, 25%, 28%, 33%, 40%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%. Your marital status and income would decide your tax bracket, you must be aware of these most important things. However, there are many others which you should to learn about. You should learn the way to solve them and know these things properly, you should learn on the ways to fill your income tax forms in a correct manner. Lot of people would prefer to have services of a professional to prepare or fill income tax forms as doing it by themselves can be very complicated sometimes. The way by which you want to do it does not matter but you should send them in time to avoid surcharges, LLC tax savings How to avail LLC tax savings, it would be wise for you if you form an LLC or limited liability company if you are interested in doing business. You may save some of your business money if you know how to make proper use of LLC tax savings which come in various forms, LLC companies should pass through taxation laws. In other words, LLC company proprietor should report their profits or share of losses in their company on individual tax returns. That is, the company cannot be taxed as an individual. Unlike C corporations, in which company profits or losses are considered in tax at corporate level, these LLC companies and its shareholders are also taxed upon their individual dividends. Therefore, if your LLC company is small and has only a few shareholders, then you can save significantly by LLC tax savings whether you are an owner or a shareholder, you would be taxed individually by the government as a sole proprietor if you are an individual owner of LLC. But if there are more than one owners, then IRS would tax you as per the partnership. However, even if an LLC is owned only by a few people and the company is really the owner then you can avail LLC tax savings because the government policies would not tax. Both at the corporate level and the personal level, moreover, the chances of audit by the IRS are also minimal if you form your company in this way along with LLC tax savings. Statistics obtained by studies depicts that non-incorporated tax payers who file Schedule C due to their businesses often run between 2-3% to chances of being audited by IRS. However, it has been observed that LLCs run about 0.33% chances of being audited. It would not be wrong to say that you can avail various other benefits. Along with LLC tax savings, by forming your company in this way. Most of us always survive to avoid an audit in our company. You should talk with your attorney and your tax advisor whenever you plan to convert your business into LLC company. You need an attorney to help you with LLC regulations as they differ by state and only an expertise of your state's laws can deal with this easily. It would be 
better to confirm with. With your tax advisor what would be the exact implications as opposed to sole proprietorship or a partnership if you convert your business into an LLC. Once you have gone through all the facts, it's time to decide about the right kind of entity for business. It can be difficult to understand all of the tax implications you would have to incur of owning a business. Remember that it is always beneficial to stay informed as the way your business would be set up or runs could have a big financial impact on your personal finances and your business too. Benefits of online tax forms over traditional methods. In past, the only way by which you could deal with your taxes was by searching for the right kind of forms and then having someone send those to you by mail or you would drive to that place for those forms. The next step involved filling and resending the forms to its destination through regular mail. It would consume considerable time in exchange of forms via simple mail or ordinary post. Although there are types of people who still like this old way of dealing with taxes but nowadays. Several options are available at your disposal. You can opt for internet or online tax forms which can be filled and submitted online only. You would require to visit an approved website if you want to fill online tax forms and send them also. It simply means that only specified websites has been approved to deal with this task. To search for approved websites you need to browse IRS website or the website of the state you live in. You can fill online tax forms in few clicks once you discover the approved website. Once you find the approved website and fill in forms for your tax, all you need to do is to click a send button to deliver the forms with the concerned authorities. Isn't that easy? Be sure to take printout or copy of taxes you have paid for future reference. You can also save it, on CD or on your computer. This way a backup of the forms that you have filled would remain, with you. It is very important that you search for and fill up the right tax forms online. You would have to fill, the form correctly and resend it if you have filled the wrong form. The best way is to do some, research on the types of online tax forms available and their use. This would help you to select, correct online tax forms. Online search and submission of taxes is gaining popularity day by day due to its ease of use and instant feedback mechanism. Although it would take some time to fill up the forms but not as much you could have spent in physical forms. The best way is to organize all information about your details so that you can fill up the details easily in an online form. Better the preparation, easier would be for you to fill up the forms online. Therefore, accumulate all your tax information at one place and then search for online tax forms. This way you would be able to do the work on time efficiently and pay your taxes. So, it's upon you to select between the traditional methods or online tax forms. Save on taxes by refinancing your mortgage. Amongst the various ways of saving money on our mortgage, refinancing is probably considered to be the best option. Refinancing can help you by providing the benefits of shorter, loan terms or reduced interest rates. Because of these aspects, people usually consider refinancing for the purpose of taking advantage of reduced interest rates when their financial circumstances are poor as reduced interest rates cannot be usually availed during bad credit situations. How Refinancing Helps Refinancing helps us in enjoying the benefits of reduced interest rates even if we had bought our current mortgage during times of greater interest rates. With the reduction of interest rates, our monthly payments also get considerably reduced, hence, refinancing helps us in saving considerable amount of money through reduced monthly expenses and hence lesser load on our bank accounts, the amount of money which can be saved through an easy Yet beneficial refinancing process depends upon costs of buying new loans, an individual's repayment capabilities in terms of monthly bills, duration for which you are going to stay in your new house, options for saving money, refinance websites, refinance services over the internet are extremely helpful in this regards. They help us with the calculation of refinancing payoffs. We can also calculate our expected savings by using the break-even calculators of these online services. Extension of our loan term, reducing our monthly payments through the extension of our loan term can also be extremely helpful in saving considerable amount of money as the duration for repaying the borrowed amount is prolonged. 
Due to this, our payments are spread out over a greater duration which eventually reduces our monthly payments, but if this duration is extended too much, the savings made on monthly payments would be overshadowed by more money being shelled out in paying interest. Shorter loan term and its effect on taxes, loan term can also be shortened for the purpose of saving money as lesser overall interest would be required to be paid in this case. The number of monthly payments also gets reduced, as each payment decreases our loan balance considerably, hence, lesser interest will be charged on our bank bills. Our taxes also get affected due to these altering interest payments. As our interest rates are continuously reducing, the reductions due to income tax also go down with it. This also helps in quickly building equity. All this helps in increasing our purchasing power, through increased wealth, save on taxes by spending less on credit, refinancing is an extremely effective way of saving money for the purpose of employing it in your mortgage. It can have lower loan term as well as interest rate. People have usually been found to consider refinancing when their financial circumstances are not good as refinancing interest rates are quite low, refinancing helps in availing. The benefits of reduced interest rates over our current mortgages, in instances when the interest rates have dipped after we have already bought a particular mortgage, this is also an implication of the fact that when interest rates change, the payment which is required to be made each month for repaying the mortgage also reduces. Hence, refinancing helps in saving a huge amount of money by drastically our monthly outgoings which eventually reduces the load on our bank bills, saving money through refinancing is quite easy. You just need to look after certain important real estate aspects, the amount of money which can be saved through refinancing depends on a number of factors, like the expenses which are associated with purchase of new loans individual preferences regarding monthly bills which are dependent on an individual's income, the amount of time which an individual will be staying for in his, her new house, saving options. Various refinance websites are available over the internet for helping you with the calculations related to refinancing payoffs. Break-even calculators are also provided by these websites which help us in estimating our expected savings which will be generated due to refinancing. People can also opt for extending their loan term for the purpose of saving considerable money. This means that the duration for which we will be repaying our loan gets prolonged. Such an extension of loan term spreads out our repayment over a greater duration which results in the reduction of monthly payments. But, extension should not be overdone as longer term, means more number of payments and hence this might mean that the saving made on monthly, payments get squandered away by greater overall interest being paid, you can also think of shortening your loan period for the purpose of paying less interest as, shorter loan periods mean lesser total interest amounts as less number of monthly payments, are required for repaying the loan. As each payment reduces our balance by larger amounts, interest charges also get decreased, this helps in quickly building equity and reducing income tax deductions, save money. This is a huge investment in itself, save on taxes by investing in life insurance, there is a well-known saying which conveys that saving money is equivalent to earning money, life insurance is one of the most sought after ways of saving money today. A media poll conducted recently says that this option has become popular amongst societies all sections, especially senior citizens. In today's information age, consumers are indeed the undisputed king of all business activities. You are just required to conduct a proper survey of the deals available in the market for the purpose of finding the best one amongst them. Today's consumerist economy is primarily responsible for this changing face of life insurance firms. They have become the most preferred way of saving money according to the consumers. You can consult industry insiders for the purpose of selecting an effective life insurance deal. Things which should be considered while I think about group insurance, life insurances which are sponsored by employers are probably the safest option. Even if you are required to spend some money over this out of your very own pocket, still go ahead with this. Reputed corporations' employers usually provide subsidies over the costs associated with group insurances which make them less expensive as compared to personal life insurances. Deciding the premium rate, 
you can conduct a small survey research of the market for the purpose of deciding the most optimum premium rate which will be charged by corporations in the field of life insurance. Such a survey research will also help you in finding a rate which would be the most suitable for you as different companies offer us with different rates even if the policy is same. Don't prefer small interval payment of premiums, payment of the insurance premiums at short. Intervals is a more costly affair as compared to paying them once in every 6 months or 12 months, renewal guarantees, you should always think about taking up renewal guarantees. This helps you in starting a fresh term after the termination of your current renewal, making right moves and being careful are essential here, save on taxes, hot tips, starting your very own business is an extremely effective way of saving tax. You may be thinking that taxes cannot be reduced this way but you should understand that not each and every company makes profit. If the company is not doing too well, it will help you in saving on taxes, a business can be started from just about anything. For e.g. you can also think about converting your hobby into your business, various kinds of expenses are associated with a business. Some of these expenses are trade show attendance, supplies, mileage, all these expenses are charged to your income. You must properly track your expenses for the purpose of tax savings, education, it is rarely considered as a way for saving tax. Irrespective of the fact that whether you are taking odd classes or pursuing some full course for earning a degree, tuition is always tax deductible, deductions up to about $4,000 are possible. You are also allowed to avail the deduction in the name of your college-going children or your spouse. Interest which is paid for the purpose of availing student loans also comes under the purview of deductibles, hence, returning to school helps you. In reducing taxes and providing you with new skills which will further increase your income by improving your earning capability, debt, you should also think about converting your bad debt, or debt which is non-deductible, into debt, which is deductible, or good debt, car loans and credit cards come under the category of bad debt whereas loans over the equity available on your homes and mortgages come under the category of good debt. Interest which is paid over good debt helps you in tax savings as this debt is deductible. The saved money can be employed for clearing the bad debts. Hence, this method is extremely useful as it helps in reducing taxes as well as the chances of paying lower interest also get increased. This can be attributed to the fact that interest which is paid on good debt like the loans over the equity available on our homes is less as compared to personal loans and credit cards, stocks, keep a track over the performance of the stocks which you have. If the value of these stocks has become less than their original worth which existed during the time of buying them and is consistently underperforming, sell them, stocks which are not profitable at the time of selling are deductible, be wise, save money save on taxes with tax deductions, tax time is just around the corner. Hmm. Now does that make you nervous, everyone starts getting anxious and nervous during that particular yearly period when they are required to clear their taxes as a huge chunk of their earnings will be required to be given away. But, they have to learn living as well as dealing with this thing. Of course, only if you don't like going to the jail, you don't have to be so scared of taxes and it is not necessary that they will cost you a lot of money. Certain ways are available which can immensely help you in saving money. Tax, deductions are one of them. What are they? You are just required to find those things in your taxes which are deductible. Though this process is quite simple but not many people know the way of doing this, taxes are charges on a particular part of our earnings or income which is taxable. If we can designate few things of our earnings as non-taxable, this would mean that no tax would be required to be paid on that particular part of the income. The portion of our yearly earnings which is taxable can be reduced by learning about the various kinds of deductions for which we have the required eligibility. However, there is something more to this. The deductions which can be claimed by us are dependent upon the particular way opted by us for the purpose of filing our taxes. Several kinds of ways are available for this purpose, 
we should opt for that particular way which will be the most suitable to our personal circumstances and will result in the maximum amount of money being saved at the end. Types, you can either go for itemized deductions or standardized deductions while filing for deductions. Over your taxes, this amount varies from one year to another on account of reasons like inflation and so on. But, rather than getting worried about all this, you can straight away learn about this amount from your tax forms as deductions are present on each form. Standardized deduction is simple as compared to itemized deduction and hence, it is the most opted one. But, this selection should only be made upon the criterion that which one of them results in greater savings for you. Having a good credit record further eases the process of getting tax deductions. But, restrain yourself from claiming too many of them for preventing the IRS from getting suspicious. Federal Tax Law 2005 for Nonprofit Organizations Federal Tax Law allows tax exempt status to nonprofit organizations. The status has many advantages, but it is important that those setting up nonprofit organizations understand federal tax law if they are to get the most out of this status and avoid running into trouble. Getting to know the ins and outs of the law will pay off in the long run, it is something to consider at the very outset because only certain kinds of organizations qualify for tax exempt status under the Federal Tax Law of 2005. First of all, it is necessary to understand what kind of organizations can be classified as nonprofit. Nonprofit organizations include a wide range of organizations such as schools, hospitals, public, charities, volunteer agencies, legal aid organizations, political organizations, churches, labor, unions, and professional bodies, research institutions, and some government bodies. Under the Federal Tax Law of 2005 these organizations do not have to pay tax. But those who run them still need to understand how the Federal Tax Law applies to them if they are to protect their tax, exempt status. The Federal Tax Law of 2005 defines a nonprofit organization as group organized for purposes. Other than generating profit and in which no part of the organization's income is distributed to its members, directors, or officers. They can also be called non stock organizations. A non profit organization must be declared a non profit organization when it is set up in order to qualify for tax exempt status under the Federal Tax Law of 2005. A non profit organization must be established for a religious, charitable, scientific, public safety, literary, or educational purposes. To prevent cruelty to children or animals, or to develop sport whether on a national or international level. The statutes of the organization must clearly state that it is for no other purpose than those that are allowed for tax-exempt status. Nonprofit organizations are also exempt from social security tax. For an organization that is run entirely by volunteers this may be a useful factor. Volunteers will benefit from social security contributions made through their regular employment. But organizations that employ salaried staff usually opt to pay social security taxes because their employees would be disadvantaged otherwise. About 80% of nonprofit bodies pay social security tax despite the exemption. This is something to consider when setting up a nonprofit organization. When a nonprofit organization is set up, it must apply to the IRS for 501c3 status. This is the technical term that means it has tax-exempt status under the 2005 Federal Tax Law. This special tax status allows the organization to receive tax-deductible donations. Donors to the organization can then deduct their donation from their own tax return. Tax exemption is, therefore, a major benefit for any nonprofit organization since it provides an incentive to donors and maintains the organization's income stream. Tax exempt status does not mean that a nonprofit organization does not have to keep financial records. Effectively, a nonprofit organization has to keep the same records as though it were going to submit a tax return. In order to maintain its 501c3 status, a nonprofit organization must keep a record of all its revenue from donations, grants, sponsorships, and so on. The IRS can demand that a nonprofit organization files information about its income, 
understanding how the federal tax law applies to nonprofit organizations will help you to run a successful organization. Understanding California state taxes, taxes in California fall into three categories. There are taxes on income, on property, and on sales. Let us look first at income tax. This is paid on personal income. It is a progressive tax that varies according to the size of the income. There are six tax bands. On the first $6,622 of taxable, income 1% tax must be paid. This goes up to 2% for the next tax ban between $6,623 and $15,698. The third tax bracket, $15,699 and $24,776, pays 4%. It is 6% on incomes between $24,777 and $34,394 and 8% on incomes between $34,395 and $43,467. Above that level tax is payable at 9.3%, in addition there is a 1%. Surcharge on incomes over $1 million. This makes the highest income marginal tax rate 10.3% in California. Tax returns must be submitted by April 15 every year. They should be made on Form 540 Easy, Form 540A, Short Form, Form 540, Long Form, or Form 540 ADS, couples can file joint tax returns. In this case the allowances for each tax bracket are doubled, sales tax varies across California. In January 2002 it was generally 7.25%. This figure includes state, county and local sales taxes. The state component is 6.25%. But in some cities and counties with their own powers of taxation it may be higher, what is regarded as taxable may vary from business to business. Gift wrapping may or may not be counted as a taxable item for sales tax purposes. Some businesses treat it as a non-taxable item. When food is gift-wrapped the gift-wrapping service may be taxed but the food itself, exempt, taxes are payable on real estate in California. But there are many exemptions. Those who think they may be able to claim an exemption should apply to the local county tax assessor's office for information. Some homesteads are exempt from local property taxes. Disabled citizens and senior citizens may be eligible for tax postponement. This applies to their principal residence only. It involves recording a lien against the property. Interest is charged on the postponed tax. There is also an assistance program for eligible homeowners and renters. It consists of a once a year payment that is based on a proportion of the tax payable on their homes or included in their rent. There are no inheritance taxes in California. Estate tax is being brought into line with changes in federal estate tax law and is currently being phased out. For people who died after January 1, 2005 there is no need to file an estate tax return, there are no intangible personal property taxes in California. Only real estate is liable for taxation under California taxation law, more details can be found on the California. Franchise Tax Board Website The state's instruction book will explain about the exemptions that are allowable and what refunds can be claimed. The instruction book also explains the program of voluntary fund contributions that can be made by California citizens. Make your personal finances work for you. Most of us dream about being rich but few of us seriously think about how to achieve it. We imagine a win on the lottery or at Las Vegas. We fantasize about how we would spend our winnings. We do not take steps to improve our financial situation. The lucky windfall can happen, but by its nature it is rare. Most of us will never experience such a chance event. It is better to develop a plan our finances just as a we would set out a business, plan if we were setting up a business. Getting rich is not a matter of chance it is down to hard, work and application. If we have not inherited wealth we must plan how to increase our income. Even if we have inherited wealth it pays to plan how to maximize what we have.
Many people who are fortunate enough to inherit money fritter it away in unplanned and wasteful spending. If you are a young person starting out in life with no inherited wealth one of the best things you can do to improve your finances is to postpone marriage. Marriage is an expensive business. It means buying a house and everything that goes with it. It also means that you may be tied to one place and unable to move to find work. At the start of your career you must be prepared to be mobile in order to advance your career. Some employers claim they like married employees but then expect them to work long on social hours. Long hours will put a strain on any marriage. If you do marry then postpone having a family. Children are a serious expense. There is health care, education and a whole host of expenses to consider. Health is one of the most important factors in economic well-being. Ill health is expensive. It means doctor's bills and loss of earning potential. So do not take risks with your health. If you smoke then give up. If you are overweight then lose weight. Obesity and smoking are major health risks. Take daily exercise. Walking or running are cheap enough for anyone to afford, above all, avoid getting into debt. This is one of the easiest temptations to fall into. Credit is so easy. Store cards, credit cards, personal loans, mortgages all drain your income. Buying a house may be a good investment in a period of rising house prices. But in a period of falling, house prices it is not. When house prices are collapsing you may get a good deal to rent, never buy on impulse. Obviously you need to buy things. You must have a working wardrobe if you are to be taken seriously by an employer or a business contact. But plan what you buy, make the things that you buy last. Buy for quality. Always check out the sales and stock clearance outlets. You need to aim for quality and value. Saving is vital if you are going to improve your personal finances. You should get into the habit as early as possible. If you have savings you can avoid debt and have a cushion against unexpected expenses. Aim to have twice your monthly earnings in reserve, remember though that money is only a means to an end. Do not become so obsessed with money that you cannot be happy. There is always someone with more money than you. The importance of acquiring a financial planning certificate, a financial planning certificate is vital for anyone who wants to pursue a career in the business. Of financial planning. Possessing a financial planning certificate tells a prospective employer that you are serious about the business and that you have taken care to prepare yourself for your chosen profession. This is a competitive field and it is important to increase your employability. Some companies offer training but your lack of qualifications will be reflected in the salary level. If you can get a recognized qualification in financial planning while you are pursuing other studies that are less vocationally orientated you may have an advantage over other job seekers. If you intend to set up your own business then a financial planning certificate is still useful because it covers all the main areas that you will need to understand to operate effectively. It will also reassure clients that you are competent and qualified to handle their affairs, so whether you are seeking employment or planning to go it alone a financial planning certificate is a useful qualification to have. If you are already in employment but feel that your career is stalled a financial planning certificate may help to revitalize your career, if you are returning to work after a spell as a homemaker a financial planning certificate may be useful to you. It will show a prospective employer that you have up-to-date business, knowledge and are familiar with the latest practice, even if you plan to work in the non-profit sector a financial planning certificate may be helpful in securing employment. Many of the same business criteria apply in this field and a financial planning certificate will tell any employer that you are familiar with the requirements of financial planning, many universities and colleges provide financial planning certificate courses. There are credit and non-credit certificate programs. They are available at graduate and undergraduate level. Different courses have different admission criteria depending on their level. Most educational institutions have courses that meet the requirements laid down by the CFP board. It is important to check this before you start the course. 
The CFP board requirements are the industry, standard and are recognized by all the major companies working in this sector. Your course should cover all the main areas involved in financial planning. It should also offer you the opportunity to experience financial planning in a real client situation. That way you gain practical experience. This will give you confidence. And be a plus point for an employer. There is no substitute for actual experience because every client situation is different. Part of the skill of being a financial planner is knowing what your client and being able to understand their specific needs. Before you take the exams it may be helpful to take a review course. It is important to prepare well for the exam. A review course will ensure that you have the knowledge at your fingertips and your efforts will not be wasted, social development and financial planning. Financial planning is a vital part of social development. Underdeveloped countries are generally weak in financial planning capacity. The ability to control finances and to model future outcomes demands a high level of skill that is often in short supply. A lack of financial planning inevitably produces waste and poor outcomes. It leaves budgets open to deliberate siphoning of funds as, well as lost through incompetent management, every government in a developed country has large numbers of officials whose sole task is financial planning. In every department from health to education, from agriculture and fisheries to transport and industry there are financial planners at work, poor countries simply do not have the number of skilled people to fulfill all these tasks. Even if the education system of a poor country can produce enough graduates they may be tempted abroad by higher salaries and better prospects. It is extremely difficult for an underdeveloped country to create this human infrastructure of skilled financial administrators. International bodies such as the UN and its many agencies, the IMF and the World Bank can help. They can provide trained personnel or they can pay the salaries of local administrators. Non-government organizations often provide skilled people to work as volunteers training, locals in the techniques of financial planning, developing countries may even lack the technical means to carry out financial planning. There may be too few computers available. Economic and social figures are frequently out of date. Up-to-date figures are essential to plot trends and plan ahead. We hear more about medical and educational experts volunteering to help underdeveloped countries but people skilled in financial planning can be just as useful. Where long-term development projects are concerned financial planning expertise can be even more important, they ensure that services can be delivered in the long term and not just as on an emergency. Basis to achieve real, sustainable development financial planning must be established in underdeveloped countries, there are important democratic issues involved. Emergency aid is essential in a drought, a famine or a war, but it is seldom controlled by local people. Once local people have the necessary skills to undertake financial planning they are able to take decisions about where money should be spent, financial planning also makes transparency possible. If the finances of a government or agency are chaotic it is impossible to tell if its resources are being used well or honestly. Clear planning means that decisions can be reviewed. A program can be assessed for its effectiveness, wastage can be eliminated, if all the money is accounted for there is no danger of money being used as bribes or disappearing into the offshore bank accounts of powerful individuals. Vast amounts of the money intended as aid to developing countries has been lost in this way. There is not enough public scrutiny of funds to prevent it. Good financial planning can empower the society to control the government and enhance the democratic process. An overview of Hennepin County property taxes. Property taxes are the way that most local areas collect the tax revenue that funds the services citizens need in that area. The level of taxation, the method of assessment and the exemptions that apply vary from one area to another. This article explains how the property works in Hennepin County, Minnesota. Property taxes provide the basic means of funding essential services such as schools, roads, transit, fire, police and mosquito prevention in Hennepin County. 
the taxes are raised on a countywide basis and then distributed between the school districts, cities, townships, and special districts. They are an attempt to share the cost of the services which are necessary for civic life on an equitable basis. The level of taxation that the citizen pays is based on the market value of the property they own. Tax assessors calculate the market value of the property. The individual property is then placed in a category according to its estimated value. The actual tax that the resident pays is then worked out according to the millage rate. The millage rate is a formula based on the level of the county budget. It varies from year to year and depends on the amount that is needed to cover the budget based on the value of the properties assessed. Residents will receive a notification of the market value of their house as determined by the county tax assessor. There is an appeals process. If you think the valuation of your house is too high you can appeal. You must file your appeal with the county tax board. When your appeal is heard the Hennepin County Tax Assessor will explain why your house was valued as it was and what the assessment was based on. It is important to be able to explain why your house has been wrongly valued and make a case for a reduction. If you win your appeal and the market value of your house is reduced you may be entitled to a Refund of taxes already paid for previous years and to reduce taxation for the coming year, home improvements will normally increase the market value of your house and hence increase your tax assessment. However there are exceptions. If your house is more than 45 years old it may qualify for exemption under the this old house rule. An old house can be improved in some cases without becoming liable to to higher taxation. This provision acts as an incentive to owners to improve older houses rather than allowing them to deteriorate. There are also what are called homestead exemptions. These apply to the primary residence of the taxpayer. They do not apply to second homes or holiday homes. There are cases in which you can apply for a homestead exemption in which a qualified resident lives. Residents who are blind or severely disabled are entitled to homestead exemptions. You should file for homestead. Exemptions at the county offices, Kentucky state taxes, all states in the USA levy local taxes to pay for local services. The level of taxation and the details of exemptions and refunds vary from state to state. It is important to be aware of what the tax law is in the state where you are resident, do business, work, or are just visiting. Income tax is a progressive tax which means that as your income increases so you pay more tax. It is the basic form of taxation in Kentucky. In the state of Kentucky the rate of income tax ranges from 2% to 6%. There are six income brackets. The lowest rate is 2% on the first $3,000 of taxable income. It then increases to 3% on the next $1,000 of taxable income and to 4% on incomes between $4,000 to $5,000. On taxable, income between $5,001 and $8,000 tax is paid at 5% and at 5.8% on incomes between $8,001 and $75,000. Above that level tax is payable at 6%. If you work within the state you will be liable to state income tax even if you do not live in Kentucky. These income tax brackets apply whether the tax is filed by a couple or an individual. Income tax forms must be filed by April 15 every year. This is true for all states in the USA. There are, however, extensions and adjustments available to this due date. Former state, federal local government and U.S. railroad employees who have a pension have a tax-exempt allowance up to $41,110. This sum will vary and should be checked on the website of the relevant pension board website. Tax credits based on the federal poverty level are available for families. Individuals on low incomes may also qualify. One person on an income of less than 133% of the threshold income of $9,800 qualifies for a tax credit. For a family of two the threshold is $13,200, for a family of three it is $16,600, and for a family of four or more it is $20,000, tax is levied on personal and real property in Kentucky. The rates vary according to the type of 
property. It is quite a complex system. You should check the rate for your property on the official website. Unlike some states, Kentucky has an inheritance tax. There is also an estate tax which is determined by federal tax law. Intangible property, such as bonds, interests, annuities, trusts, money market accounts, loans to stockholders and notes, is liable to taxation in the state of Kentucky. There is a different due date for tax forms relating to property in the state of Kentucky. They must be filed between January 1st and May 15th annually rather than April 15th as for income tax. Sales tax applies to all goods bought in the state of Kentucky and to goods bought outside the state but used or consumed within the state. It is levied at the rate of 6% in Kentucky, Maryland state taxes. There are four categories of taxation in the state of Maryland in the USA. There are income, taxes, sales tax, property tax as well as inheritance and estate tax. Income tax is levied at different rates for residents and non-residents of Maryland. Residents pay income tax according to four income brackets. Income tax is payable at 2% on the first $1,000 of taxable income, at 3% on the next $1,000 and 4% on the next $1,000 of taxable income. On taxable income of more than $3,001 tax is payable at 4.75%, non-residents who work in the state pay an additional 1.25% on top of the 4.75% rate. That brings the effective tax rate to 6%, the City of Baltimore and the 23 counties of Maryland levy their own income taxes. These are known as piggyback taxes. They are set locally but you file them on the same forms as the general state income tax. The funds are then distributed to the local government of the area where you live. They vary from 1.25% to 3.2% of taxable income. There are 11 income tax credits available to those who are eligible. Details are available from the tax office or the official website. Sales tax is 5% in Maryland. It is payable on all purchases. A use tax of 5% is payable on good, bought outside the state but used in Maryland. A special form is available for the payment of the use tax. Property tax is payable on all real properties in Maryland. Property that is owned by charitable, religious and education institutions is exempt, as are federal, state and local government properties. When the value of a property increases by more than 10% in a year the increased tax assessment is limited to 10% by the state. Some counties and municipalities follow the same rule. There are a number of property tax credits and exemptions available. They cover historic properties and a range of other situations. Both property owners and renters may be eligible for exemptions in some cases. It is important to check what is available with your local tax office. Estate tax is payable on the estates of Maryland residents or property owners who died after December 31, 2001 if the estate was worth more than $1 million after its value has been adjusted for taxable gifts. Tax forms must be filed by April 15 annually. An extra day is allowed if the due date falls on a Sunday or a public holiday. In line with federal policy Maryland allows an extra day for filing tax forms. Tax forms can be filed online using iFile Maryland. This applies to both income tax and other Maryland state taxes. All the schedules and forms are available. If you are within the old state line there are facilities to check the status of your tax refunds online. Ohio state taxes, the state of Ohio, or the Buckeyes state as it is known, is in the process of cutting its tax rates. In 2005 the top rate of income tax was 7.185%. Now it is 6.87% with further cuts planned until 2009. There are seven brackets of income tax. On the first $5,000 of taxable income tax is paid at 0.681%. This increases to 1.361% on incomes between $5,001 and $10,000. It is 2.722% on taxable income between $10,001 and $15,000, rising to 3.403% on incomes between $15.
$1,000,001, and $20,000. On taxable incomes between $20,001 and $40,000 it is 4.083%. Between $40,001 and $80,000 it is 4.764%. It is 5.444% on incomes between $80,001 and $100,000 and 6.32% on incomes from $100,001 and $200,000. The top rate on incomes over $200,001 and above is 6.87%. In addition to the state income tax there are local income taxes levied by some municipalities in Ohio. Income taxes to fund the public education system are levied by some school districts. The school district income tax is collected through employers. The employer withholds an amount, based on the individual quarterly estimated payments and annual returns. These funds are earmarked specifically for the support of school districts. Residents of those school districts that collect an income tax must file an annual return on Ohio, Form SD 100. State sales tax is 5.5%. It has been cut from its previous 6% level. Local sales taxes may also be collected by counties and regional transport authorities. There is a maximum level of 1.5% on regional transport sales taxes. Local authorities can increase their sales taxes in increments of 0.25%. There is a total limit for the sales tax from state county and transit authorities of 8.5%, tangible personal property for residential, agricultural and business use is subject to taxation, business property tax is in the process of being phased out and will be eliminated by 2009, local tax programs are administered by the Property Tax Administration Fund. The 10% tax, rollback. On commercial and industrial properties was removed in 2005. There is still a rollback, for residential and agricultural properties, there is no inheritance or estate tax in Ohio. Federal tax law eliminated the tax credit for state death duties from January 1, 2005. Estates of those who died on or after that date are not liable to tax. Tax returns can be filed online in Ohio. All state income tax returns and local taxes can be filed in this way. Taxpayers in Ohio can check the status of all their tax returns, including school, district income tax, online, tax returns must be filed by April 15th every year. That is the same as in other states. If that date falls on a Sunday or a public holiday then they can be filed the next day, UBS Financial Services for Small and Large Business, UBS Financial Services is a global company that provides a full range of financial services to individual clients and companies all over the world. In an increasingly globalized world economy, that the kind of international expertise that UBS Financial Services can offer is a distinct advantage to all types of client that need to manage their wealth. UBS offers a service that reflects the global nature of financial markets, UBS Financial Services has offices on every continent. It operates in Switzerland, the United States, Canada, South America, Europe, the Middle East, Asia and Africa. If even this comprehensive network does not put you near a branch of UBS Financial Services you can use the banking online service. UBS Financial Services online banking offers the convenience of Making decisions from the comfort of your own home and provides the same range of wealth, management and investment services, individual customers can benefit from a complete range of financial services. UBS Financial Services offers annuities, 401k plans, securities, mutual funds, fund management, wealth, management, life and health insurance programs and trust funds. In addition UBS Financial Services can provide an Attorney Network, Roth IRA Accounts, Estate Planning, Account, Management, Retirement Distribution Analysis, Educational Funds and Fund Management and Lines of Credit. In other words UBS Financial Services offers all the services you would expect to find in a worldwide financial service. For businesses of all sizes UBS Financial Services offers a comprehensive range of services, 
UBS Financial Services can provide a customized package consisting of employee stock, ownership management, retirement services, corporate cash management, consulting and a global expansion option. Whatever size of business you run UBS Financial Services has something to offer. If your business already operates globally then UBS Financial Services can offer specialized services including rates and currency calculators, equities, fixed income, investment options, and help with employee benefit and retirement packages. Nonprofit agencies can benefit from UBS Financial Services because the company is sensitive to the specialist needs of this sector. UBS Financial Services is aware of the regulations that affect the disbursement of funds in the nonprofit sector. Government agencies, banks and other lending agencies work with UBS Financial Services enabling the company to develop a unique expertise in this field that can benefit large or small nonprofit agencies. UBS Financial Services operates a specialized online trading system that allows the client to input trades directly. A client who needs advice can work with a financial advisor to develop a portfolio of investments using the expert knowledge of UBS Financial Services. Both companies and individuals can take advantage of this service. This can be done in one of two ways. A. Brokerage account can have a flat rate fee on each trade or can be charged on the assets in the account. An individual or company that have a high number of trades will benefit from the second type of fee structure if they keep a steady balance in their asset account. What is a VP Financial Planner? A VP Financial Planner is a vital part of any modern business enterprise. It is a demanding and responsible job that requires a high level of knowledge about the working of the financial system and the changing business landscape. A VP Financial Planner must be a person of immense integrity and professionalism. Personal qualities required are the ability to work under pressure and to be thoroughly reliable. The VP Financial Planner is handling the most confidential data of the company for which they work. The future performance of the business depends in large part on their work. This is a post for a skilled and experienced person who has been educated to MBA standard. They will usually have CPA certification and have progressive corporate finance experience. The VP Financial Planner will work directly with the CEOs of the company as a business partner. Their job is to plan the financial affairs of the business to shape its growth and expansion. It will be essential for the VP Financial Planner to be able to identify critical issues in the company and in the business environment in which the company operates. They must understand both the local markets of the company in developments in global business and financial world. This breadth of perspective is essential if the VP financial planner is to be capable of giving timely and professional advice to the CEOs that will enable them to make the right business decisions. The post has both strategic and operational functions. It links the day-to-day -day operation of the company to the strategic management level. The VP financial planner must be able to evaluate the opportunities that are available to the company and to implement the necessary organizational measures that are required. They must understand how each financial decision will impact on the overall business entity. They have to work with financial and accounting resources in order to produce fact-based reports that will enable effective decisions to be made. The role of the VP financial planning is an essential element in the relationship between the company and outside regulatory agencies and the board of directors. This function demands a detailed knowledge of financial management and accounting systems. The public face of the company depends to a high degree on the effectiveness of the VP financial planner, a knowledge of balance sheets, general ledgers, income statements, payrolls, cash flows, accounts payables and receivable and other accounting functions is essential for the post of VP. Financial Planning This knowledge is essential to their role as an enabler within the company. They must be capable of summarizing this material so that decisions can be made. If the work of a VP financial manager appeals to you then you should seek out a good college or university course that will equip you to operate in this highly competitive field. Thank you for listening to this free audiobook. For more updates, please do not forget to subscribe, like and share. We love to do some reviews for everyone. Until next time. God bless everyone.